I recently returned home from my annual trip to Napa Valley. I was there for an entire week and I visited a number of excellent producers. In addition, I had the opportunity to attend a number of premier Napa Valley events where the producers offered tastings of not only their auction lots, but also many of the other wines that they produce. So in all, I tasted hundreds and hundreds of excellent Napa Valley wines that week. And in this video, I'm gonna share nine of my favorites. I'm also gonna be sharing some of my insights regarding some of the recent vintages in Napa Valley, as well as an outstanding cellar defender that's from a top Napa Valley producer whose top wine is extremely expensive and highly coveted by collectors, but who will be coming out with a wine later this year that sells for only about $40 or $50. So be sure to stick around for that. Elias Fernandez is the longtime winemaker at Schaefer Vineyards, and he does an incredible job with their entire lineup. The Schaefer Hillside Select has long been one of my favorite Napa Valley wines, but unfortunately that wine has been creeping up in price and is now fairly expensive. Fortunately, however, Schaefer also has a wine that offers compelling value at around the $70 price point. Specifically, I'm talking about the Schaefer TD9 Cabernet Sauvignon. For the 2021 vintage, this wine actually has Cabernet Sauvignon on the label since they increased the Cabernet Sauvignon percentage to 76% for 2021. There's also a little bit of Merlot, Petit Verdot, and even some Malbec in this blend. This is a big hedonistic wine, but one that's extremely well balanced. This one will be better with a couple years of age on it, and you can enjoy it up to 10 years or so. This is really an excellent opportunity to get a high quality, enjoyable wine from a top Napa Valley producer without breaking the bank. I recently did a podcast with Karen McNeil, who's the author of The Wine Bible. During that podcast, Karen McNeil mentioned that she was a huge fan of Kathy Corson's wines. So during my most recent trip to Napa Valley, I made it a priority to visit Corson, and I'm glad that I did. Kathy Corson is the owner and winemaker at Corson Winery, which she founded way back in 1987. Before that, she was the winemaker for producers such as Chapelet. Corson is known for her commitment to low-intervention winemaking, and for crafting elegant, balanced wines with moderate alcohol by volume and substantial balance and freshness. While this style was not in vogue during the late 90s and the better part of the early 2000s, it's definitely a style that resonates with many wine enthusiasts today. And in fact, Corson Winery is probably at the height of its popularity today, despite the fact that it's been around for decades. To achieve this classic style, among other things, Coruscant harvests its fruit a little bit earlier than most and also uses only about 50% new French oak for the maturation process. Coruscant Winery has two primary wines that I'm recommending in this video, the first of which is the Kronos Cabernet Sauvignon. The Kronos Vineyard is an estate vineyard that has old, dry farm vines that were planted in an alluvial fan or bench, which is well suited to the production of high quality Cabernet Sauvignon and which were planted way back in 1971. These gnarly old vines produce extremely low yields, but the fruit they do produce creates wines of tremendous complexity. During my visit to Corson, I was able to taste three different vintages of the Kronos Cabernet Sauvignon, 1999, 2013, and 2020. The Kronos Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon is extremely age-worthy. The 2020 vintage is the one that's the current release as the 2021 has not quite been released yet, but it is very youthful, although it does show tremendous promise and is definitely one that I would not hesitate to purchase and put away for a number of years. The 2013 is just entering the beginning stages of its drinking window. This was an extremely impressive wine and one that's already showing extremely well but which certainly has at least another decade or 15 years or more of life on it. I also had the chance to taste the 1999, and this was from a 750 milliliter bottle, but it still had plenty of life left. This was extraordinarily elegant and a real treat to taste one with this much age on it. This wine is becoming more tightly allocated, and it's a little bit more difficult to source than it used to be, the best way to get it is directly from the winery through their mailing list, 
and you can also find it at certain restaurants as well. If you're interested in library vintages, the winery does have some large formats of the Cronos Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon as well. Current releases of this wine will set you back around $240 or so. For about half the price of the Cronos Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon, you could also enjoy the Corson Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. While this wine does not contain any fruit from the Cronos Vineyard, it does contain some estate fruit from the Corson Sunbasket Vineyard, as well as some other high quality fruit that Corson has sourced for many years. This wine is also made in a restrained, well-balanced, classic style, and is definitely an excellent option if you're looking for a high-quality Napa Cabernet Sauvignon for around $120 a bottle. Way back in 1836, George Yunt planted some of the very first grapevines in Napa Valley near what is now aptly named Yuntville. 145 years later, Christian Moex purchased this historic vineyard, which is called Napa Nook. Prior to this acquisition, Mr. Moex worked in Bordeaux managing his family's Bordeaux properties, which included prestigious names such as Chateau Petrus, La Fleur Petrus, and Trottenois in Palmeral. Since acquiring the Napa Nook Vineyard, Mr. Moex's Napa Valley Winery, which is called Dominus Estate, has become one of the premier Napa Valley wineries by employing many of the same classic winemaking and grape growing techniques that have been utilized in Bordeaux for many years. At its Napa Nook Vineyard, Dominus emphasizes sustainability in dry farming and has organic certification. Dry farming produces grapevines with much stronger root systems as those roots have to struggle in search of water and nutrients. The result is lower yields with small grapes that have high skin to juice ratios and which produce intense concentrated fruit. This fruit, in turn, leads to wines with greater intensity and concentration than wines made from fruit that is produced from higher yields. Dominus Estate is an impressive wine and one that is extremely age-worthy. Even the vintages from the late 80s and the early 90s are still showing well if they were preserved properly. Due to the fact that Dominus has been made in the same way as many of the Bordeaux wines that are owned by Christian Moex, this is one that's very difficult to distinguish from Bordeaux in a blind tasting, particularly if you have one with some substantial age on it, such as from the late 80s or the 1990s. As a result, this is definitely a Napa Valley wine that I recommend to those of you who enjoy Bordeaux, but who have not yet warmed up to Napa Valley wines. While I was in Napa Valley, I had a chance to taste a number of vintages of Dominus Estate, including 2009, 2016, and 2020, which is the current release. I also had a chance to taste the 2021 vintage, which has not yet been released, but which will be coming out soon. I definitely recommend buying some older vintages of Dominus Estate if you can find some at a reasonable price and which have been stored properly, as this is an extremely age-worthy wine that shows beautifully with 15 or 20 years or so of age on it. With respect to the younger vintages, as much as I enjoy the 2020 vintage, my recommendation is to wait a little while and to load up on the 2021 vintage instead. The 2021 vintage is going to be truly special. And in fact, winemaker Todd Mastero believes that it's gonna be one of the best vintages of Dominus Estate ever produced. So definitely keep an eye out for that one when it comes out in a few months. Unlike most Napa Valley wineries, Dominus Estate does not sell wine directly. So you'll have to find your Dominus Estate wines in the secondary market. But be sure to shop around as prices vary wildly and they generally cost a little bit more than $300 for the top wine, but at some places sell it for closer to $400. So it definitely pays to shop around. If you don't want to spend $300 for a bottle of Dominus Estate, or if you have some Dominus Estate and you need a cellar defender so that you don't dig into that wine too soon, I highly recommend the Dominus Estate Napa Nook Vineyard. This is an outstanding wine that sells for less than $100 a bottle. This wine is not made from declassified fruit that was not good enough to make it in the top wine. Rather, this wine is a blend of fruit from blocks in the vineyard that were carefully selected for their lively fruit, soft tannins, and early maturing characteristics. So this is a wine that's designed to be enjoyed much earlier than the top wine. 
Notwithstanding its price, this is an extremely high quality wine and one that definitely offers better quality than many other Napa Valley wines that cost far more than this one. As with the Dominus Estate bottling, I highly recommend the 2021 vintage, which was outstanding in Napa Valley generally, and which was a very strong vintage for Dominus Estate. During my visit to Dominus Estate, I also learned some extremely exciting news, and that is that Dominus Estate is also going to be coming out with a third wine. This wine is going to be named Othello, and it will sell for only $40 or $50 per bottle, despite the fact that it's going to be made from estate fruit. This wine should be coming out later this year, so be sure to stay tuned to this channel for more information regarding this exciting release from Dominus. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level 4 diploma from the WSET, so I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Napa Valley's Catiard Vineyard was started in 2020 by the Catiard family that owns Smith Oat Lafitte in Bordeaux. Under the Catiard family ownership, the Smith Oat Lafitte wines have steadily improved in quality since they acquired that property back in 1990. Given this proven track record of success, I have no doubts that Catiard Vineyard will soon become one of the top producers in Napa Valley as well. Rather than starting from scratch, Catiard Vineyards hit the ground running by purchasing an established property that was previously owned by Flora Springs. This property is located in St. Helena and already had established vineyards on it. Unfortunately, the timing of this acquisition was not ideal as the very first vintage for the Catiard Vineyards wines was the very challenging 2020 vintage. Catiard Vineyards produces three different wines, Despite their youth and the challenges of the 2020 vintage, all three were very enjoyable. The first wine produced by Katiar Vineyards is the Ora Napa Valley Red Wine. This wine is a blend that consists of 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Merlot, and 10% Malbec. This wine comes from vines that average around 18 years of age, and it was matured in 40% New French Oak. This is definitely an enjoyable wine and one that you can enjoy early on. It had an intriguing cherry descriptor that was quite prominent. This wine received favorable scores from critics and it sells for about $125 per bottle. Moving up a level in terms of the quality ladder at Catiard Vineyards, the next wine is the Founding Brothers Napa Valley Red Wine. This wine is a blend that consists of 55% Cabernet Sauvignon, 40% Merlot, and 5% Cabernet Franc. This wine comes from vines that average around 25 years of age. While well, I mentioned earlier that the property was located in St. Helena, it actually straddles both St. Helena and Rutherford, and the vines that go into the Founding Brothers are located more on the Rutherford side. This wine was well received by critics, particularly by the wine enthusiast, which gave it a 96 point score. This one sells for around $225 per bottle. At the top of the Catiar Vineyard Quality Pyramid, you'll find the Catiar Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. This wine is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's produced from vines that average an impressive 35 years of age. This wine matures for 18 months in 80% New French Oak. This wine received two impressive 97-point scores and a 96-point score. It sells for around $390 per bottle. As enjoyable as these 2020 wines were, I fully expect that the Catiard Vineyards offerings in 2021 will be even stronger and definitely a level up from the 2020 expressions. This is so not just because 2021 was a much stronger vintage, but also because the new ownership has had another year to start implementing their improvements in the vineyard and in the winery. Catiard Vineyards is also welcoming visitors now, so if you're interested in learning more about these excellent wines, be sure to schedule a visit during your next trip to Napa Valley. While Napa Valley is justifiably recognized as a source for high quality red wine, particularly from Cabernet Sauvignon, there's also some outstanding white wine being produced in Napa Valley. Sauvignon Blanc is probably the wine that's produced in the highest volume. However, there's also some excellent Chardonnay being produced from the much cooler Los Carneros AVA. 
One of the Chardonnays that I really enjoyed during my visit to Napa Valley was the Maryvale Silhouette Chardonnay. Maryvale has a historic estate vineyard that's known as Stanley Ranch in Carneros and which provides the fruit for the outstanding Silhouette Chardonnay. According to the wine advocate, in a blind tasting, the Maryvale Silhouette Chardonnay could pass for a Grand Cru White Burgundy. And indeed, they definitely use Burgundian production methods to produce this excellent Chardonnay. Among other things, that means that they use gentle whole cluster pressing, they use native yeast for fermentation, and they do some gentle batonnage and stirring of the fine lees. This wine matures for 17 months on the fine lees in 50% new French Burgundian oak barrels. It's a wine that you can enjoy now, but which will definitely age for up to 10 years as well. It sells for around $70 per bottle, and it comes in at a very reasonable 14.5% alcohol by volume. With some Chardonnay from California coming in at 16% alcohol by volume or more, I found this to be a very elegant and enjoyable expression of Chardonnay. If you're interested in learning about more of my Napa Valley wine recommendations, please be sure to check out this video, which is linked above.